This is our, what we call our Grandview Greenhouse. It's a brand new state-of-the-art facility. Um, we're generating energy from the biochar facility. We're able to put heat in the soil. We're still playing with that. We don't know how well that's going to work. But to try and maximize that, we actually have curtains that can move and close over at night and hold the heat in. Um, the idea is to use as little of that energy as possible. Because we can make energy, that's dynamically carbon negative doesn't mean we want to waste it. We want to maximize it. When we don't need it for here, we'll use it to dry wood, dry grain, eventually cool food. Someday the Holy Grail, make electricity. You know, that's going to take us getting a little bit realer about the external subsidies that we have for energy right now. Right now it doesn't make sense economically. But environmentally, which is the real economics, it makes tons of sense. So that's, that's the future. That's why this greenhouse, this greenhouse was really installed to show the use of that energy. But then we're, gonna, of course, going to use the heck out of it. This is the greenhouse where I think I described already we kind of manufactured the soil. It's, it was sub-sub-soil. Cation exchange capacity was below 5. I remember that. Now it's at 21.5. That's a mix of sandy soil, 30% pond muck that had 8% organic matter, and um, about two-thirds of a yard of compost that had 5% biochar that it was inoculated with compost tea mixed into each 80-foot row. And from that, 21.5% um, I mean, 5 cation exchange, cation exchange capacity. So really the crop that is most blown us away here in March, so you need to get on in here and be close for this now. Um, but I guess I, I left one part out as far as how we prep this. There was a much more, because of some construction miscues that I don't need to go into, there was much more heavy machinery on this, in this greenhouse than I wanted to see. So the first thing we did was grow oilseed radish and Facilia tanacetifolium. Facilia tanacetifolium is this cutting cover, cover crop that most Americans don't know about yet. It's heavily used in Europe. It's a wonderful bee plant, and it's in the, the um, comfrey borage family, so a big, deep root, root system. We went for the cover crops that really went down there and broke open that hard pan. We really haven't seen any problem from the hard pan that that machinery, used, um, caused, that machinery affected. So where I want to take us to right away is our no longer booming because we've gotten how many pounds out of them so far? We're at about 20 pounds per plant right now. 20 pounds per plant and they're still going, right? Mountain Fresh and other tomato plants that were grown on this soil. It has really been spectacular. Um, we have a little thing we wrote up that we can give you about that. But right now I want Marshall to, to take you to that and show you that. As you pass, you'll see that we're growing in the sections we're not using, sudex and cow peas. Um, and that's to just keep building the soil. Something else I want to mention, I'm really, really about holding my fire when it comes to pests. I'm sorry. Um, we had a spider mite infestation here. We've released predators for it. I'd say the spider mites aren't really an issue anymore. You think that's true? Right. We've, we've, we've shortened up on on really treating them and we, we we could have treated them from from the word go but like Pat's saying we used the the release of the predators um, we haven't really had spider mite infestation on our fruit which is where you kind of pump the brakes and say all right we've got to get control obviously that affects your fruit quality if you're if you're getting infected um, infected in your fruit uh, but for the most part we've done pretty well one, one thing I can tell you generally, okay, your mountain fresh starts uh, starts right along right along in here. You've got about 12 plants of defiant. The remaining 31 are mountain fresh. Mountain fresh is generally grown on a 60 inch stake. These are 72 inch stakes, um, which is a little bit abnormal. Sizing fruit in the top of the plant. The top of the plant now, you're still at a medium and large size in the top of the plant. All of our stuff has been jumbo. What are the beneficials you were releasing? They were predatory mites. mites. Californicus is one of them I know. Um, I thought about actually putting a um, new pirate bug in here because I was afraid it would eat the mites you know, that I was buying. So I figured I'd just try that. Now I'm due to, or, to order the white fly predators. I got to borrow your loop again, Marshall. I'm still, 
I'm not good at looking at the tiny little things, and I'm, I still am not certain if I have greenhouse or sweet potato. But we'll be buying we'll be buying the product for that. There is a little bit of white fly pressure. What I'm really impressed with is that, despite that pressure, production has not been touched. Yeah. You know, and that's how you grow organically. If you're not losing production, then you tweak it. You go with the the predator and you wait. You know, and then if you're losing production, you come in with the least toxic, most targeted um, pesticide that you can. You know. Um, and I saw you do that, Coach, if you don't mind me calling you Coach. Uh, I saw you doing that, and that is a, a telltale I've always gone by. If I can grab that steak and shake it, and I see any white fly come off, I want insecticidal soap. Now, five minutes ago, I've had to, to acquire patience and try and figure what our balance is, what can we get away with at the stage we're at, I, I mean, it's definitely a, a, a learning process and a, and, and a lot of patients involved. I, I want them clean. I, I don't want to see any of that flying, but we're, we're trying to find where our exact balance is. And we're at 20 pounds per plant, and this stuff's ready to pick again now. Look at that. That plant's a perfect good Look at that plant. I mean, 20 pounds off it already, and look what's on there. You know? And every last piece of this is marketable fruit. You'll not... You'll not, and nor have I ever had a load of tomatoes rejected, and I'm talking about tractor trailer loads. I know but marketable still, fruit. But you still have that. Yeah, we still have that. Serious That's white flies. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, and we'll, we will solve that. About yeah. a month ago, yeah. I knocked them back a little bit with some insecticidal soap. If I wanted to, I could be doing it weekly, but we're trying. We want to build the predator populations. Right. You know, That's yeah. talk balance. That's, the key. That's it. That is yep. our key. Yeah. We're, we're trying yeah. to get that. Yeah. yeah, when I give talks, it's like I have principles, and one is balance through a riot of diversity, you know? And another one is hold your fire, you know? Give, you give your troops. Have some of those pests around if you want to keep your predators. Exactly. Well, yeah. there's time and cost involved yep. in, in the spray. Yep. Also. And, yeah. and Janine, I know you hear me. We're, we don't have acres, but if we did, we're over 3,000 boxes. To the acre on a cheap market you're going to get your money back you might not make a lot but on a dead cheap market you're going to get your money back mm -hmm. if you have that kind of yield and if you hit a prime market like this is going to be this year for all the people who are taken out yeah, if you were things are going to be tight you could, going to be high. you could really clean up you know um, you could pay for the tractor pay off the mortgage i know, you know? these are showing a lot of age Janine, but uh they were flawless i mean I've, this is the nicest crop of tomatoes that we've produced organically uh, in the three years that I've been working with this group. And you're just going to keep getting better at it. I mean, that's such a really great story to tell with your background. Well, and the, the fun thing that I remember Marshall saying to me is, Pat, I've never seen this kind of production that we didn't have a cube of chemicals pumping the nutrition yeah, in. Yeah, we Just pumping the nutrition I'm, in, you know? I, this type of production, I mean, we use a 60 inch stake. This is a 72 inch stake. We've topped it. We're six strings in. To have this kind of production, um, I would generally conventionally be dripping about three to five gallons per acre per week of a 408 or 418 liquid fertilizer. And, and I'm not. I haven't dripped one drop of fish, seaweed. All I've done is foliarly apply. So even just us sitting down and doing an enterprise budget for what you would have done conventionally versus this is going to help make a lot of people pay attention. Sure, sure. I think you were discounted substantially because it doesn't rain in here. But rain or not, it's difficult to make things work quite like I've seen these tomatoes work inside here. I mean. I would love for Randy, for Dr. Gardner, to be able to come and see what we've got going on. Um, what his genetics have given us, yeah. I mean, it's his genetics, you know. Um, and and it's, it's not just a couple on each plant. It's all the way down through here. We're ready to harvest again. And we have nice size. For, for, for eight, ten weeks of harvesting, we have nice size. What's your current outreach to farmers now? Is it local? Are you capable of national? If there was a group of farmers, say, in the Salinas Valley of California that wanted to try organic or biodynamic, are you available to help them? So we'll, we'll do it. Yeah, our mission is to teach it. 
So, so we'll, we'll do it. Try to give me your card, though. I have um, I have grown up around and no. There are no there are about five large corporations, tomato wise, in the southeast, and probably two or three of them that I'm glad to talk to. Uh, the others, I don't really care. It wouldn't be the corporations. This would be some of the large organic brands that um, are going biodynamic that need a lot of tomatoes. We'll talk to them. We'd love but, to talk to them. I'd yeah. love to. Yeah. I mean, yeah. California is an entirely different universe from it's right here. Probably easier. Oh yeah, yeah. It doesn't rain in the summer. It's, uh, it's an irrigated <laughs> you know? desert. Uh, they do a lot of open ground um, for irrigating. Uh, yeah. My so. family has had a lot of correspondence with California and the Sacramento area. Yeah. Um, they just they grow a completely different deal. It's much cheaper for them to produce. Obviously, they do a lot of open ground stuff, a lot of flood irrigation, a lot of just a completely different deal. But I'd love to to add anything that we've picked up to. To their program or be able to talk and maybe learn something from them one day. Good. Just check out the height of these peppers still in fruit. You know, I'm six foot tall. These are on a probably a, a four inch bed, but still, look at the height of that. You know, pretty incredible. Um, that's the fertility, and it's not like it's all vegetative. We've been picking loads of fruit off of these guys.